Guten Morgen, Silvia. Morning. Today we'll look at results, or we'll prepare the community water model to show us changes in total water storage through time, and then we'll compare these with the GRACE results we captured last time. Mm -hmm. Could we go to the climate data and see what years we have available? So maybe we go to the settings file. Settings. Oh yeah, so for ah, GRACE. The climate data, yes. Yeah. So for GRACE, we have it from, it says there, 2002, uh, April mm -hmm. to 2017, January. Okay, mm -hmm. um, so we'll definitely do that range for, for the community water model, but we have even earlier data, so we can first see how the results compare for this period, but then if we see that we have confidence in the results, we can also learn something from what the community water model says about the change in water storage through time for the Danube Basin since what well, we'll see. Mm -hmm. um, not in this file, actually. Yeah, could we go to the settings file and we'll see uh, the folder? Yeah, perfect. In fact, we, we could just this, uh, the path no, to you. This, this. And we could copy the whole path and path made to you. The output uh, we want? Uh, the path made to you, just two lines down. Ah, made to you. Ah. Ah, okay. Yes. Okay, so we have all the way from 1901, which is which is so cool. I've never done it from 1901. I've only done it from 1960, so. Yeah, it's quite far back. So 1901, and it goes to 2019. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, can we go to the settings file and let's put in those dates? Okay. Oops. Yeah. Perfect. So the month here is not specified? Yeah, in fact, to open up NetCDF files, it's useful to have a program like called Panoply. You don't mm -hmm. have it. You have to download no. Java to do it. We'll do that in a, another time. But I assume it starts from the first day of January, 1901. Okay. Okay. The last day should be the December 31st. Okay. But that's something we can do next time. Mm-hmm. Okay, can you scroll down slightly? I just want to confirm we're, uh, we're, so we're still loading the initial map. That's fine. Um, now, because we're doing such a long run, we have to be careful about how many outputs we save because it's going to get very sluggish. Could we scroll all the way to the bottom? We're going to compare with GRACE, which is the change in water storage through time. So what we're really interested in is total water storage. That's the sum of lakes and reservoirs, soil moisture, uh, okay. Channel storage, mm -hmm. intercept, uh, groundwater. That's all held in a single variable together. They're s held also separately, but a single variable called TWS, total water storage. So in fact, let's, it, it won't be in this list actually. Ah, okay. <laughs> and we were saving daily. We're actually going to start saving monthly and we'll compare monthly results with Grace. Okay. So just put a comment sign in front of this out underscore map underscore daily. In front of the whole thing, in front of even the word out, put the number sign. A number sign? Yeah, ah, the pound one? sign. Yeah, exactly. Oh. So that'll just make it so the model doesn't uh, read it. And now we're going to type in, Yeah, you can copy out underscore map underscore and just paste it above this line, for example. Yeah, and anywhere, yeah. And we're going to do month. Um, we're going to have to do two variables, actually. We're going to do month end. So capital E-N-D after the month. So this is going to hold... With an underscore? Uh, no, just with a capital E right away. Month end equals T-W-S. 
and all lowercase. Ah. I'm just going to confirm that this is the right notation. Yeah. Okay, so that's going to show us at the end of each month the total water storage recorded in the Danube mm -hmm. Basin. Could we scroll up again? Actually, can you search for the word limit? And then the letter A right away. Yeah, great. Limit. We're looking um, with the letter A instead of E. Ah. Yeah, so we're looking and just search. We're looking for limit abstraction. Uh, could you click wrap around? Or go up, you sure that's fine. Okay, so we're looking at limit abstraction equals true. For this example, we're going to allow fossil water. We're going to allow for the system to not limit abstraction, but when there's demand, to take it from fossil water. Okay. So let's do limit abstraction equals false. In fact, we could do we could do two simulations, one where we don't allow fossil water and one we, where we do allow fossil water, um, which would both be interesting and we can see based on how it approximates the gray signal. Mm, actually, actually, I think I want to do limit abstraction equals false. Within the Danube Basin, I think we are not necessarily significantly using fossil water mm -hmm. as comparable to, say, northern India or Saudi Arabia. Let's, right. let's keep limit abstraction equals true for the first analysis, and we can always come back and do a second analysis allowing for fossil water. So let's put limit abstraction equals true again. We won't allow fossil water to be taken, because I'm not of the impression that fossil water is a significant contributor to satisfying water demands in the Danube Basin. Mm -hmm. But we, will, we can always do a second um, scenario again and compare the results. Okay, since we have limit abstraction equals true, and we don't have fossil water in this scenario, uh, we have all the outputs we need. So just to confirm, could we go to the bottom of the settings file again? So all the outputs are shut off except for total water storage. So yes, do we need month uh, beginning or N no, no, just it's, month end? It's, okay. it's sort of this the month. We'll just capture at the end of each month. We could also capture month. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. We could also capture month average. Mm -hmm. That might also be interesting. Let's also take this result. So make a second line. You actually see that output already. This one. Ex exactly. Mm -hmm. So you could uncomment that, remove discharge precipitation runoff, and just put TWS. Right. We'll see the difference of them when we output the results later. Okay. I think we have everything we need. And then we have the last one. Output map total end equals cell area. Mm -hmm. That's just yes. one snapshot at the very end of the simulation, just sh uh, showing a map of the area for each cell. That allows us to turn TWS, which is held in the unit of meters, uh, into volume by multiplying it by the size of each cell. Okay, let's let's run this simulation. Okay. Oh, perfect save. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Activating the virtual environment. Yes, and uh, now let's see if I remember it all. <laughs> so, Python. Awesome. Space, the folder, I think, or? The location of yeah. CWAT M. Yes, exactly, yeah. which is uh, this one. Slash. Uh, Run. <laughs> yeah, run underscore C what M. Or just if you push tab now, it should complete it. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Good. Then the settings file. Yeah, 
S E T. Miss. Ah, okay. And then if you were to put, it's the only perfect. You got it. And then dash L, which just stands for loud, which shows us some outputs while the model is running. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Let's do it. Okay, so that's good. The right basin, the Danube Basin is around 800,000 kilometers squared at 30 arc minute resolution, so around 50 kilometer by 50 kilometer resolution. That means 373 cells. Okay, okay so uh, we, have, we have some time. Um, could we go to the Excel document holding the GRACE data we extracted last time? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So you notice the timestamp in the first column and then the change in water storage relative to a reference period in the next three columns from the three different computational centers. Mm -hmm. uh, what you'll notice is that the timestamp isn't necessarily continuous. So it goes April, May, we're missing June, July, then August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, that's fine. We're missing June. Yeah. So to compare this uh, with CWATM, where we will have continuous data or data for every month, we should put in the date, we should put in the missing month everywhere and then just leave a blank line or blank values for the uh, change in water storage for the three computational centers. Okay, so they will match afterwards. Exactly. So there is just probably... Just the blank line? Yeah, just... Um, so here we want to insert two blank lines. Okay. So I would highlight... Uh, well, you can highlight two lines. Yeah, and then... Yeah, yeah. so it'll, it'll be some... Yeah, sure, exactly. So... <laughs> Okay, I just go on. Yep. Uh, we can speed through this part. There's, uh, yeah, we do this in a relaxed <laughs> way. I've done this several times before. Listeners. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I watch with you to make sure we're not missing anything. Right, so here's yes. the funny one. So in this you case, yeah. <laughs> so this case, I would, I'll let us interpret this as January. Yeah. Okay. So no change needed. Right. Let's change. Let's not change this one. Yeah. December. Okay. Please tell me if I miss something. Yeah, I do. We do it together. <laughs> yeah. Seems fine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, January is missing. June. Oh, okay, let's interpret it as November. <laughs> Maybe this is April. Mm -hmm. Then we're missing May. I've never sped up a video, so it'll be interesting to see what it's like to see us sped up doing this. Yeah. <laughs> February. March. Oh, here we're missing two. August, September, yes. Oh.
Was this January is a bit, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> Uh, as a uh, yeah, I would interpret it as July. What right. do you say? Because yeah, it's yeah. twenty nine. Oops. And I would uh, yeah yeah yeah. Uh, would you interpret no, it as November? No no, no you're this is okay. perfect yeah. September October November December February March. Okay. Cool. Okay. Should be fine. Cool. But then, if there's a mismatch, we'll, we'll yeah, exactly. be able to see it afterwards. Exactly. Yeah. We'll then. we'll capture that. We'll capture the see what M results. We'll transform them into Excel and we'll paste them here and we'll see again if there's a mm -hmm. mismatch. Mm -hmm. But just so preparing. I save this file. Save this. I don't remember where it's going. So. Okay, fine. <laughs> cool. Okay, so we let the model run and we come back then. Okay. Okay, cool. Good. See you soon, Thank Sylvia. You Ciao. Yes. Guten Tag, Sylvia. Hi, Nike. Let's go to the folder where we created the CYM output data. Thank you. Perfect. Could you take the data we produced, the three files, and put them into a separate folder? So the cell area total end, yeah, TWS month average, TWS month end, and put them into a different folder. Mm -hmm. um, can it be inside this folder or completely sure, another? Sure. Ah, Why okay. Not? Should I call it? Okay. Would you go to the GitHub CWATM repository? into toolkit and into notebooks. And we open up a command prompt, great. And we're opening up Jupyter Notebooks in here. We're gonna use a new notebook that will uh, translate the maps of total water storage into an Excel time series. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're going to go to the Excel outputs from NetCDF. Let us put that output folder you just created into this path. Scroll down slightly. Yeah, let's try to run this and see what happens. Okay. Mm -hmm. With the double arrow. I always suggest the double arrow. Because zero starts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ah. Mm -hmm. I'm always learning. Let's activate the virtual environment and then set up Jupyter Notebooks. Ah, um, always, yes. <laughs> um, what was control that? Control C. Ah, oh, Control C. Control C. Okay. 
So once again, oh no, it's already there. Mine there. Okay. Yeah. Then just run. Hmm. Looks like it didn't find some files. Yeah. Scroll all the way to the bottom. It just doesn't have the... Okay, yeah. Can we in... Yeah, in the folder with the notebooks. Can you create a folder called Outputs with a capital O? I'll make a note to put this in so that someone else doesn't have to do the same thing, that the folder should already exist. Mm -hmm. Now let's run the notebook again. Where was it here? Yes. Perfect. Let's go <laughs> into that folder you just created, and we should find an Excel file in there. Great. So we have, um, let's say, three sets of columns for each of the output data sets that we had. We have the cell area, we have the total water storage month end, and the total water storage month average. What we're looking at here, let's focus on the month end um, and not focus on so let's focus on, focus on the last two columns. So what we're looking at here is the sum of all the water storage in the Danube Basin at the snapshot at the end of every month. We need not, in fact, take this actual volume of water too seriously, but we're also exploring the change in water storage. That's really the signal we're trying to take from this. So we see in 1901, at the end of January, we have an estimate of this much water storage, and this is the same for all years uh, up to 2019. Mm -hmm. Grace looks at change in water storage relative to the years 2004 to 2009, to the end of 2009. Let us take the average water storage from here, so the average water storage from CYM from between 2004 to the end of 2009. Here. Perfect. So we don't have to highlight the date, but just highlight or yeah, we want to put a formula and calculate the average of all of these ah, dates. Okay. Here it's just fine. Now, okay. somehow, if we put it here, we might we might get lost. We could put the formula at the beginning of the at the top of the page. Wait. Um, maybe I'll just take note. Sure. Great oh, idea. One, two, two, three, eight. Two thousand nine, you said. The end of two thousand nine, yeah. Mm -hmm. So let me take note. Okay. And I guess maybe F. Yeah, the other one was F. Or both both of them in F. Ah, uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> of course. Okay. Great. Um, now we want to take 
the total water storage month end minus this average for all of the months. Mm-hmm. You, you know, we could we could delete just for now rows or columns A through E. Okay. So we need the you said the total minus the average? Yep. Okay. For all of, oh sorry, we didn't want to we deleted one column too much. I want to keep the timestamps. Um, yeah, thank you. Ah, uh, because it's the total of those uh, of that period as well. Yeah, but more just keep the timestamps. When we compare it to Grace, we know how to put them back on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the total it's from nineteen one hundred nineteen oh one uh, oh one until the very end. Right. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay. Then. Oh, okay. Sorry. I think I wasn't clear. We, let's create a second column, or let's create in column C, let's call this total water storage Yeah. minus average. And so in this, yeah, perfect. So then in the cell just below, this would be cell B2 yeah, until the very end. No, just minus the average. Ah, for each year. For each month. Ah, yeah, sorry, for each month. Ah, okay. Sorry. Now I see what you mean. Perfect. I thought you wanted it. Total, yeah, total. yeah. <laughs> sorry. Okay. And there, just to make sure the formula keeps, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, perfect. Okay. Yeah. Now we want to take the grace data and put it alongside this data. So we can create another column, yeah. We could yeah, maybe even maybe. take the timestamps with it. So like we can call it grace dates and grace. Mm -hmm. We need to compare with this, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, then maybe we would put it here. Water storage? Uh, change in water storage. Yep. Okay, great. Okay. Now we copy in the grace data. All of this? No. Ah, okay. One thing. Uh, yeah. This is in centimeters. Yeah. Okay. And we are dealing with volumes. What we have to do is divide our values by the area of the Danube Basin. Okay. Can we go back to the Excel? Okay, can you save this as a different file? So it's called C1M Output. Can you call it? Um, come in. Hey. Yes. Okay, you made your, deb you made your debut. 
Okay, see you. Great. Okay, now can we see if that original C1M file, that original C1M output file? You don't have to close this. You can. It's fine. Okay. Yeah. We open this one. And that value actually in B2 is the area of the basin. It is the sum right. of the cell area for the whole Danube Basin. So right now, just again to go through, so this one is in centimeters. We're going to aim to hit centimeters. So let's go back to our C1M output grace comparison. So the Excel file you just sa we saved and closed out of. Perfect. And we want to divide everything in column C by the area of the Danube Basin. Okay. Or, yeah, I don't know where it's better to put it here. <laughs> and then it'll be in meters. Okay, and right away, we want it in centimeters. And since this is in meters, so we can multiply this whole thing by a hundred. Ah, yes, we want it in centimeters. So basically the steps were, and the first two are interchangeable. Um, we subtract by the average from 2004 to the end of 2009. We divide by the area of the basin, mm -hmm. and then we multiply by a hundred. And that will give us centimeters change in storage. Which is the, um, the data the grace gives also. Yes. Or mm -hmm. the, the way centimeters. the way it's being given. Yeah, to the us. output. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we can put the grace data on there. But there are different observations. Do we need to let's average take all of them. those? We okay. could, we could, but let's. Um, the average maybe means nothing, but it could also be a, a way of simplifying it. But okay. just for this, let's let's take opportunity of all three of them. We want to scroll all the way down until we get to April 2nd, and then we can paste it right where we match the date. Or not April, April 2002, is it? Um, yes. Oops. Yeah. Yes, April 2002. And paste one above it because you have you you copied also the titles. Yes. Okay. Cool. Was it uh, yeah. the F G? Uh, no, I don't remember. If you paste Wait. here, I think you'll be fine. Okay. <laughs> ah, yeah, of course, okay. because okay. I haven't selected the just the ones I need. Okay. 
Okay, and maybe we could take oh, once one moment. Can you scroll all the way to the dates on the left? Uh, all the way to the left. Maybe we actually go one up because the end of March is closer to the first of April. Yeah, perfect. And then we move maybe the titles all the way to the top. Mm, wait. It was from F. Okay. Oh, okay. maybe, maybe uh, there's an overlap, and yeah, E at the top is also holding the volumes. Yeah, exactly. I was gonna move this to. Okay. Uh, cool. Cool. <laughs> Uh, maybe uh, one column left as well. If Can you shift to the right a little bit? I think we can also copy the values from H. Did you already move them over? Can you uh, move Which the... Which value from H? Because there are... Ah, oh. sorry. Okay, okay, awesome. While we're down here, can we just look at the bottom gray state and confirm that it matches with the date from the very left? Mm -hmm. So if we scroll down to the bottom gray state. So here, so ah, because it's 31 yeah. April, uh, March, yes. Yeah, okay. Ah, because that's 30 our... November, yes, yeah. perfect. Okay, yes. perfect, okay. Now we just want to visualize the three GRACE signals with or the GRACE uh, computing center changes in storage with that from CWATM and then the, attempt, the timestamp on the very left. So let's visualize columns A, D, G, H, and I. We need not do F. We don't need, okay. Okay. How do you want to visualize it? Maybe uh, go to uh, insert, uh, recommended charts, uh, go all charts. Yeah, uh, not call, can you go to line? Okay. Is this? Hey, oh, you're leaving. Okay, one moment. Right back. <laughs> I stop it here. Okay. Hey. We're good with the speakers. Yes. Good with the speakers. Yes, I hear you. Okay, let's click line and see what comes out of it. Mm, a lot of lines. <laughs> a lot, lot of, of lines. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, before we look at this then, can we just visualize the dates that overlap with the grace period? Yes, better. So I just delete this? Sure. Yeah. It's a nice foreshadowing to what we're going to be able to see from the data from 1901 until now. Mm -hmm. So we want... And I guess we'll also have to take the very top row for the titles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got this. <laughs> so this, and then was D, right? I don't know if it's there's a faster way of doing it. <laughs> this, I think this is fine. But yeah, this works. <laughs> Too far. Okay. Mm. 
Mm. And then just the date, yeah. And then insert, yeah. Oh no. Let's try oh, okay. all charts and then oh, okay. and line. Yeah. Oh yes. This cool. looks way better. Okay, so blue is what's coming from C what M and the lines are the other three computing centers. This looks great. They correspond. Yes. Yes. Looks really great. You okay, can see so... where the data from Grace is missing, probably. Mm -hmm. Some pieces. But... So what are the highest points? When is the total water storage in the Danube Basin the highest? So I see here January. Yeah, seems like. If you hover over the point, it might give you the date. Mm, not no. yet. <laughs> ah, there. Ah, yes. So that's like the February? end of February. Okay, end February, of February. End of February. It's, like it's not always so obvious, yeah. This one doesn't want to tell you. No. <laughs> <laughs> ah, maybe it was appearing. Oh. <laughs> okay. At the end of March. Okay. End of March. Okay, but yeah, quite. Okay, okay so like early spring. Mm -hmm. Quite a clear pattern. Okay. And this so, for Grace, yeah, end of February. Okay, so we have some confidence in the simulation results of the change in total water storage, at least relative to what Grace is sharing with us. Let's now look at the change in total water storage for the entire period we simulated from 1901 to 2019. We can okay. keep this chart on the side as well. We need not delete it. Yeah, I don't want to delete it. Yeah, yeah. It's so nice. It's nice. <laughs> okay. So, but um, again, in comparison with uh, Grace, as well we could oh. why not just to throw it on there so as i did before exactly Okay, we can we can do different analyses with this at a later stage. But is, what what do you notice looking at this right away? There's a peak here, which was in 1942, end of February, 1942. But yeah, you can see the yearly uh, pattern is you very. For, you for sure see the yearly very pattern. Clear. Very clear. Mm very -hmm. clear. But you also see this what it looks like decadal seasonality. Like you see this yes. sort of a larger um, ebb and flow of, of longer periods of, of heaviness and longer periods of lightness. So the Danube is certainly subject to uh, a seasonality beyond yearly, a decadal sort of ebb and flow of dryness and wetness. Yes. Yes, it's, it's hard you can see to see also very yeah. well that when the peak yeah. is higher, then the lowest is also significantly higher. higher. Wow, yeah, yeah. that's a, that's an exceptional yeah. case, and then it drops quite significantly. Yeah, yeah, awesome, Sylvia. Yeah, this is really nice. We have compared Grace with the community water model and taken an opportunity of our. Uh, confidence in the simulation of change in total water storage to look at the change in total water storage across the Danube Basin from 1901 to the end of 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a pleasure. Thank you, Sylvia. Yeah, thank you. Um, Till next time. See you next time.